Morning, Mr. Corbett. Have you got anything for me today? No, Scott. And push off with that barrel. My nose can't stand that awful stink. Why, it's all from the respectable citizens of Clifton. Beat it. <laughs> you see that, Scott? Yet I'm considered blind. <laughs> Bet there's no one with a name like that in all of Clifton. In fact, in all Arizona. You bet, Bill. You're the best shot in all of the West. <laughs> you filthy tramp. How many times do I have to tell you not to dirty my bottles? I have to use them again, and you know it. Now get out of here, or I'll get rid of that other eye for you. Bill didn't dirty him on purpose, Mr. Murray. I'll wash the bottles. Don't ever touch me again, you... you ugly son of a bitch! I wonder what's up. Huh? Why, it's years since we heard any shooting like that in Clifton. Who fired that shot, a bonehead or a boozer? It's nothing serious. Mr. Murray says a buckshot and our old friend Bill's behind. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? There's the barrel empty. Don't pass this way. You'll stink up the saloon. Back the other way. Mr. Murray, I thought I heard some shooting. It was me, Nigel, to clean out the barrel. You should do the same every so often if you can still find your gun. Well, I'm the law here. And this in Clifton is worth more than fancy hardware. Good morning, Doctor. Where have you been so bright and early? I had a rough night of it between a birth and a bad case of diarrhea. No complications, I hope. About the birth, I think you should ask Hart Perkins. His wife had two little boys. As for the case of diarrhea, it was that old mayor of Judge Cutcher's. <laughs> Scott, when you finish your rounds, take your broom and go and sweep in front of Skill's house, you hear? Yes, Mr. Miller.
Hi, you, Gwen. How are you? I haven't seen you for a long time. Oh. Show too much and you can't sell it. And you, have you come here to gawk? Now get busy with that broom. When you finish, come to me. I'll give you a quarter. Thanks a lot, Vivian. I don't want anything for doing it. I don't forget how much you did for me when I was here. <laughs> you were just a babe in arms, Scott. Are you looking for something? A stable. Ah, yes. There's Miller's stable at the far end of the street. You can't miss it. And where can I sleep? And sleep good. There at the Gala Saloon, sir. You passed by just now. Gambling house and a hotel, bar and a restaurant. You'll like it. You want to earn a dollar? Take my horse to the stable. Yes, sir. What's your name? Scott. Scott what? Only Scott. Because of my mother. I never did know her. And what was her name? Her first name was Mary. Mary. That's as good as any other name. Why not call yourself Scott Mary? <laughs> They'd all laugh at me. If I said my name was Scott Mary. So what? Who knows for sure whether they'd laugh at it. When you get my horse settled, come on over to the saloon and pick up your dollar. My name's Talby. <laughs> Good job, Murph. Take good care of him. I've already earned a dollar just for bringing him here. Look at that saddle. First class leather, worked by hand. What are you going to do with that dollar? Why, I'm saving it. With this, I already have eight. And when I save another ten, I'll be buying a colt at the Emporium. And what will you do with it, Sonny? The days of fast guns are over. Once upon a time, a good pistol is worth more than money in the bank. When Doc Holliday of the OK Corral died, there was a real massacre of people trying to get hold of his gun. Doc Holliday was the best shot in all the West. Him, not his pistol. Him and his pistol. There can be the experience of a lifetime in a gun. It's not enough to be able to draw faster than the other guy if the other guy knows a trick that you don't know. In my day, we had to either learn the tricks or we gave work to the grave diggers. I'll buy myself a coat and I'm gonna wear it. I wanna see if anyone will still have the courage to call me a bastard. The one I got now is wood. 
But it's better than pushing an old broom. Right, Murph? Sometimes I wonder if I wasn't just damn stupid when I taught you how to draw. Do the job well, because this Talby might give you a dollar too. Talby? Yeah, the name of the stranger. Talby? I think I've heard that name before. You have, eh? Not in this town, though. Not in Clifton. They're very pretty. <laughs> Too bad. In a few days, they're gonna be dead. My pa doesn't want you to speak to me ever again. Eileen. Eileen! Oh, good morning, Judge Cutcher. Ah, uh, you see, ah, uh, uh, You're a good boy, Scott, but you're an illegitimate bastard. Your mother was one of Vivian Skills' girls, and your father, who knows who your father was. That's always been a pretty popular house. You mustn't raise your eyes to look at my daughter. Mind that. You must never talk to her. And you must never stop here again. Beat it! Is that clear? Beat it. Sit down. It's all right. Sit down. Would you like a whiskey, Scott Mary? What are you doing here? He's my guest. He wants a whiskey. You're not from around here. He cleans the toilets and collects the garbage. Well, he sweeps the sidewalk, sometimes even the saloon. He can't sit down here. So if he wants to drink, he's got to go to the kitchen. He ain't the kind of customer. A whiskey. Come out, Abel. Or should I do it? You don't want to make us drink with that garbage man, do you? Didn't you hear that? Get out of here! Scott Mary is my guest. My guests drink with me as long as I or they please. Listen, stranger, Clifton is our city. We don't want anyone to boss us around. If you don't watch out, I'm gonna punch your teeth out and throw you out of here. Get out! You'll have to use your gun. Right now. No! <laughs> testify that I fired only after he aimed his gun at me. 
Perkins was a braggart and a bully. But he never tried to shoot anyone. Now, how was I supposed to know that? A gun is not a toy. Drink up, Scott Mary. I don't like to hang around a dead man. That your first? You better have another drink to keep a company. Silence! 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 Having heard the witnesses, I, Judge Kutcher, in the name of the law, proclaim that Hart Perkins died in the course of an unprovoked attack during which Mr. Frank Talby exercised his right of self-defense. We'll teach you to keep in your place. Just one more question. First man you ever killed, Talby? That is, I mean, in self-defense, huh? No, it wasn't my first one, Nigel. You want me to put notches on my gun? The hearing is closed. Just a minute, you. Oh. Wait, and hit him outside. What the law doesn't see, it can't punish. Oh. This old teacher to keep your place. Oh. And don't dirty my saloon with your filthy presence. Oh. You'll be needing a lesson, Scott, for your own good. And this oh. is for poor Perkins. Oh. Those twins were born just yesterday. Hold it, Murray. The boy had nothing to Go do with it. Go back to the stable, you old fool. You better run, Scott. When they arrive, they'll get Telby. Guess he's gone.
Come on, Sartana. Let's go. Damn it all, Sartana. It's because of you we lost him again. Come on, you stupid mule. Hold it. I don't like people to mistreat their animals. But... You've been following me, kid. You better come up with a good excuse or it may be your last one. I had to escape. They were out for my blood. Now, that's no excuse. I want to get to be like you. I know how to draw, but I've never had a real pistol. If I'm taught right, I'm pretty bright. I'd be useful to you as a sort of partner. Maybe. All right. First lesson. Never beg another man. You take me with you? How much money you got? Eight dollars. Give it to me. It'll be useful for your second lesson. Oh. <laughs> second lesson. Never trust anyone. Sartana, we got to go and hear that third list. What's that? Tequila, senor. You say it's the only thing we got here. But what's your throat? Around here, everybody takes a glass before taking a trip. 
Well, my trip ends here. You go tell that to Wild Jack. My name's Talby. <laughs> Right away, senor. Hey, listen, stranger. What town is this? Boy, boy, at least for now. For now? Why? Because it's gonna be hell here pretty soon. Why? 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 Third lesson, never get between a gun and its target. been better if you hadn't come here, Talby. Don't be a pessimist. You never can tell. I said that for your own good. <laughs> I'm not after revenge, Wild. Give me my $50,000, we'll be friends again. You can believe it or not, I don't have one lousy, stinking dollar. I just got out of jail three weeks ago. I know that. I've been waiting 10 years to give you the bill. You lost your money. I spent 10 years in jail. That's your business. In order to pull this deal, I had to bring in certain people from Clifton. If you're going to tell me your life story, why don't you sit down? We were all set to pull a job in Abilene. The Clifton people had clean hands. They only passed on the information. They said they were going to alibi for me. Everything was perfect. There were no risks. We were to split the money down the middle. And those clean hands tricked you. You're damn right they did. They testified against me. The money disappeared. Well, what could I do? My word against a banker, a judge, the rest of those honest, rich bastards. And so my 50,000 ended up in their pockets, too. Exactly. Well, why don't you go to Clifton now? Take your revenge if you have to. But get the money that's owed to you, and then you can pay your debt to me. I got a price in my head. They're looking for me all over Arizona. I'm here in Bowie, but I got one foot in Mexico. All right. I'll tell you what we can do. You get me the names of those people in Clifton. Then you go on down to Mexico. And you stay there. What are you going to do? Let's say I'm buying your revenge for $50,000. Then the honest people of Clifton can owe their debt to Frank Talby instead. How's that? Or else? Or else. You have to pay, one way or another. All right, Talby. I can't argue with you. You're too fast. Drinks for everyone. I want to celebrate the return of an old friend. Everybody drink. You ain't. 
ain't drinking. Not yet, Wild. Maybe you're telling the truth and maybe you're not. If everything goes all right, I'll drink to your health. In Clifton. You think you're pretty funny, don't you tell me? Well, we'll drink, amigos. To Wild Jack's health. Yeah. No. You ain't drinking either? No. I'm with him. Teach you how to drink and bowie. Now we'll see if you drink. That's enough, Wild. Venga. Punches are like bullets. If you don't make the first ones count, Scotty, you might just be finished. I'll remember that. And now what? Wait for him at Bill Farrell's place. Hey, Wild Jack. What's the matter with you? Why in hell don't we take care of that man now? If I get the chance, I'll take care of him. The rest of you get going. Hurry. Forgetting something wild, I still want the names of those people in Clifton. I ain't forgetting nothing. There was Turner, the banker. He knew about the shipment of gold. Judge Kutcher. He was gonna alibi for me. Abel Murray, he was driving the train. Bill Farrell, he was in command of the garrison. He's got a ranch now, out Stafford Way. No, Frank. Don't 
Don't kill me. No! You can't kill him! You can't kill him! Man, you better kill him. Or sooner or later, he's going to kill you. Farrell! Put your hands up. If you make a move, you're a dead man. Wild Jack responsible for this? And you're gonna be next. Now you're going for a nice little ride. <laughs> Yeah! 
that. <laughs> Sixth lesson. The right bullet at the right time. Well aimed. Bravo, Scott Mary. Bravo. Looks like I owe you my life. You owe me nothing. But take me along, will you? Seventh lesson. If you untie a man, take his gun before that. Eighth lesson. Don't give a man any more bullets than what he's got use for. <laughs> Very good. All right, Scott. You can come with me. But don't get your hopes up too high, because it's a dirty life. can I do for you, sir? I want to see all the pistols you got. P pistols? Yes. Pistols. Yes, yes. Yes, certainly, sir. Pistols. Uh, right away, sir. Uh... See how it feels in your hand. All right, let's see how that gun belt fits. Put it on. All right, we'll take the works, plus a hundred bullets. How much? The pistol and the gun bell come to uh, $50. About the bullets, all I got is three dozen. Well, we'll take what you have, but you better get some more in stock. They're going to be very popular in a few days. Now, there's six for the gun. Uh, they're mine? All mine? Even the pistol, huh? Loaded. Now, let's see if it's worth the expense. It's a day, sir. Your belt's too high. Put the butt of your gun down by your wrist. Like so. All right? See what you can do with that sign up there. Good. You didn't waste a shot. Mr. Talby, how could you have aimed six bullets like that? Go slowly at first. You don't hammer a hammer. Just fan it. 
It's all a 20 years that sign's there. What's going on here? What's all this rumpus? You better get your horse and disappear. Listen, Toby. I warn you, Perkins' friends have sworn to get you. Take it easy, Marshal. If I need any assistance, I can hire my own. You won't find anyone. You want to try me, Mr. Talby? Now get, Scott, before my patience begins to wear out. Marshal, that's how it started with Hart Perkins. You mean to threaten? No, only a warning. <laughs> whether they show up or not. You sold your life for very little, Scott. Back, Mr. Talby. And what brings you here? It's a matter of money. You wish to make a deposit? No, withdraw. But uh, you've no account. You've no account open here, Mr. Talby. I don't, but Wild Jack does. But, uh. Well, Wild Jack. <laughs> Wild Jack is dead. But the account is still open, and I've come to close it. Uh, what do you mean, sir? Bill Farrow is dead, too. But before he died, he signed a confession, in which he listed all the names of his accomplices, including yours. Mr. Talby. What's the... the amount of the withdrawal? A thousand dollars. One thousand. Give me a thousand. Here you are. And now may I have that, that document? For so little? What do you take me for? Thank you. My money's safe with you. Something wrong, Mr. Turner? Go call Abel Murray and Judge Kutcher immediately. Yes, sir. Wait! Just a moment! For Abel Murray, it's much too late, I'm afraid. Go and call the judge. Tell him to get here right away. Yes. What does that mean? We're partners. 50-50, this whole place. For a thousand dollars? I know I'm generous. I'm paying for something that's already mine. But, Mr. Salby, if this is a joke... This is no joke. I lost my sense of humor. I inherited my hair from Wild Jack. I'm somebody in Clifton now. I've got a bank account now, half a saloon. And these scales of justice will be leaning the way I tell them to. And you just watch the way I tell them to. Now, son. What? What is it? It's a contract of partnership. But... Bill Farrow talked. And you sign it or tomorrow you end up on the gallows.
Good. Got a room for me? My boss now. Number seven. What did you make me sign? A nice, complete, detailed confession. They're coming, Scott Mary. All those people are locked up in their houses. The Perkins Ranch is to the north, so they should be coming from down there. Scott, remember, a man on horseback has to divide his attention between his horse and his gun, so you cannot let them dismount. Now find yourself a spot in the shadows over there where you can't be seen. You want me to shoot? Don't shoot until after I do. And when you shoot, shoot fast and hit your target. Boss on watch, huh? Where have you put your little errand boy? You better step aside a little. They're coming. You get so hooked, Calvi. Listen, men. I want you all to be law-abiding. There's been a trial, and Frank Calvi was acquitted. You're putting yourself right smack against the law. So clear out of here, I'll put you in jail. Since when you protecting killers with your shiny star? You better listen to me, McKenzie. Remember what happened to Hart? He met the wrong man and had a bad end. Why listen to this fool? Let's get it over with! We didn't come here to listen to his blubber. Come on, let's make this tell me that! Better get out of here. He spread his men around. He set a trap. Go to the devil, will you? You stay back. Good work, Scotty. Now nobody will dare get in your way. Not in this town. But you're wounded. No problem. It's just on the left side. Four dead and two wounded. I want to know what the devil you want, Toby. I only shot after they knocked you down, Marshal. Scott, I think this town is ours. Mm. 
Nothing more to be done for these two, Judge. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, you'll have to acquit him again, I'm afraid, Judge. Where is he? You've taken plenty of time. My friend is wounded. This one's much worse. That's one of the men who attacked us. Scott, you've been drinking. Don't touch me, you bastard. I'll not be sweeping in front of your house again. You can bet on that. Now get out, you bastard, you. What did you do to him? He's acting like some rabid wolf. He was born a wolf. You made him rabid, not me. Good boy, Scott Mary. You've always been underestimated. I'm the first to recognize it and to ask you to excuse me. Bring me the broom. What? I said the broom. The same one you gave me to sweep this pigsty. Scott, go back to the stable. After you, Marshal. Pigs go before. I'm gonna show you. Marshal, don't do anything foolish. Not now. What you've been needing is a beating, Scott, with a big, big stick. A big stick, huh? I used to have one once. Watch this. Hold it, Murray. Hey, no! <laughs> Scott! This isn't what I wanted for you. Come away. Go to hell. All of you! You're pretty damn fast, Scott, Mary. Not bad. And now, may I go and take care of the other one? Go ahead. Was he your friend? He the one that showed you how to draw? Yes, it was him. Murph Allen. Murph Allen? That's right. He works in the stable down the street. Ron Miller's. Murph Allen Short. Now I remember. He's gotten so old he can't wear a gun anymore, huh? You know him? Yeah, I know him. He was a marshal in Abilene once. Ran me out of town with a rifle to my back. It was a long time ago, but I won't forget it. You know, maybe he was right. I should take your gun away and send you back to the stable. Don't try it, Talby. It's too late. Yeah. It's too late. Are there any arrivals for me? I think so, Miss Vivian. Howdy. I'm Vivian Skill. Will you follow me? Your rooms are all ready. Here's your consignment of bullets, Mrs. Darton. What does 
building to stretch back just as far as it'll go because I want to be able to fit in that 30-foot bar that we've got. This is very important. Of course, Mr. Talbot, we'll make it as big as you want. All right, oh. now, I'll tell you what I want to do for my house. You've made yourself a lot of enemies, Mr. Talby. Thanks. Been hit, Talby? The old wound hasn't healed yet. Who is he? Is he with us or against us? Why did he save your life? Pretty soon we'll find out. Gentlemen. What's the idea? Why did you save the life of that man, Owen? We brought you here to kill him. I've traveled for 500 miles to get here. And I couldn't let a barber steal my work from me. Then you must have known it was Talby. And you went and saved him. For my $10,000. Well? Since you're so sure you're gonna kill him, he is a third of it now. The rest after. It may cost you a little more this way. Nigel? No. This was Corbett's. Now it's yours. It's a great rifle in the hands of a good shot. I gotta warn you, Owen is able to shoot ten buffalo riding full speed. Poor old Corbett was an expert only with a razor. Nigel, the weapon that's gonna kill me hasn't been invented yet. Who knows? <laughs> I've heard that you're pretty quick with a pistol. And I don't want to question that, Talby. But who knows if you'd take on a real duel? You mean one of those games where they count off paces? Almost. Except on horseback and with front-loading rifles. You got a reason for this. I've already told you once, Talby. You've made a lot of enemies. I know. All right, I'll kill you any way you want. Tomorrow morning. At sunrise.
you're no better than he is. But I hope you plug him. It's the first time I've had the best wishes of a marshal. You can count on me. But I don't understand, Talby. Will you tell me why you accepted this ridiculous duel? Ninth lesson. There are times you have to accept a challenge. Or lose everything there is in life anyway. This is one of those times. But I wouldn't worry about it too much. No, 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 please. Don't do it. It, it, it wasn't my idea. Oh, don't. No, no. Don't ruin me. No, it wasn't me. I didn't want to. I'll do whatever you want. You know something, Mary? I don't like this place anymore. No? Pretty soon I'll be opening up my new saloon. You know what I'm going to call it? The 45, in honor of this one. I'm dissolving our partnership. Now I want my half. Your thousand dollars. Now, come on, Murray. You know this place is worth at least 40,000. Now, I'm not good at mathematics, but I'm sure you can figure it out. But you gave me... No, 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 no. Whatever you want. $20,000. But I don't have it on me right now. I... It's enough for payment on demand. Sign it. Yeah. That's it. I'll fill in the amount later. Mr. Talby. Here's your receipt.
see Mr. Talby. Where is Talby? I'm afraid there's nothing to be done, Scott. God be merciful to the man's soul. Thanks. Talby, for a minute I thought you were... You're the only one to would have cared. Well, once the moon's gone, let's build us another one. Scott's together with Talby. I'm not sure which of the two is more dangerous to us. Right now, he's got us wrapped around his finger. But I'll talk to the marshal. Things will change pretty soon. Pretty soon? What's pretty soon? He might come here at any moment and fix us fine. Toby's in no hurry. But we've got to wait for the right move. Toby wants to become the owner of the whole town. And he'll succeed if we don't find a way to isolate him, which means get rid of Scott. And I think I've found a way to do it. Cheer up. It'll be all right. Things have always worked out before, and they will this time. So long. Who is it? Inside, there's Talby. He wants to speak to you personally, Mr. Turner. If he wants any money, give him any amount he wants. I'm sure we'll get it all back from him. Deputies. That's what's needed. Well, I'm thinking of joining. Have you seen Scott? <laughs> they need assistance. <laughs> With the $50 they'll be earning a month, I bet they won't save enough money to buy their own coffins. <laughs> you oughtn't to speak like that against <laughs> defenders of the law. I'll speak the way I please. Read that sign. I'm coming. What do I do about it? Well, why don't you come in and we'll discuss it? Come on. Hey, you. You tell us, boy, where we might find a man called Talby. But who are you to ask? We work for him, you see. He's in the saloon. Where did you find that pistol? That? Oh, the marshal gave it to me. Huh. Who are you now, Murph Allen Short? Or are you simply plain Murph? One day I made my choice. You can never go back. Tell the truth. You don't like my bin with Talby. You watch out. They've been saying that you're faster than him. 
you may be faster and quicker with your eye and your hand, but in order to survive, you need something else, experience. You're trying to turn me against him. Talby should be about 45. That's a bad age for a gunman. Every day you feel yourself getting slower. Your muscles still react, but your reflexes aren't as quick. Talby has done the same as a lot of others before him. He's taken a helper, somebody young, who shoots for him when things get too difficult. That's a lie. But even if it was true, what's bad in that? The day will come when you'll be throwing too big a shadow on him. This is his last chance, his last city. Either he sets himself up here for life, or he leaves his skin. I don't believe any more in your ridiculous fairy tales. Scott, never hammer a hammer. Just caress it. And that's just what Talby said. I don't get it. Have you ever seen him draw? But Murph, what's the point? That's one of his tricks. You shoot like this. And he shoots like this. But if you hold the barrel like that, you make sure that you don't stop the drum. Of course, that's why Talby's modified the hammer. He can fire six shots in the time it takes you to fire three. And he's more accurate. It's all in the gun. Was it he who chose your gun? Yeah, Murph. It's a beautiful weapon. Beautiful, huh? But the barrel is seven inches long. Huh, the best size for me. Have you seen Talby's gun? Yes, it's one like mine. Um, only it's missing the sight. Exactly. It hasn't got a sight because he has sawed off the barrel. You have two more inches of barrel. Two more inches to draw. Do you know what that means? Look, I've had more than enough of this talk. But you think you'll put me against Talby only because of a pistol much shorter than mine? Think of me when the day comes if you should find yourself face to face with Talby. I'm going. Listen, my boy. If anything should happen to me, I've hidden a package there, in the box where you used to keep your money. Bah. Take it, if you remember me. But leave it there if you still think I'm an old lunatic. Forget it! gentlemen. I don't think there's anyone, anybody, more sorry about Abel Murray than I am. I hope now you can enjoy this place just as much as you enjoyed his. Thank you. Gambling. 
people who come and play here? We're about ready to start. Please sit down. Would you be seated, please? The game's about to begin. Split the card, sir. Place your bets. Place your bets. Number 14 for the gentleman. Deuce or Hawks? Round and round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. Get your bets in, please. Bets in. Next round. That's fine. Right in. Looks like you won, sir. Well, you're very lucky. Here you are. What do we do? Just let him go to the upstairs window. You can go out the back where I came in. Be careful, these guys aren't just cowboys. You go ahead. Hey, Cross. Looking for someone? What do you say? Want to leave things up to the pistols? You begin, Cross. I'm a deputy. Do you get that clear? I represent the law. You're just like any other gunman paid to kill me. All right, I'm ready. Put away your Spitfire, Talby. It's all over. In this town, there are no more deputies with a fast pistol. Come on inside, we gotta celebrate. His songs were sad, but he knew how to play. He won't play anymore. I don't think this is a night to celebrate. When did you get so sentimental, Scott Mary? Beginning now. Scott Mary, will you come with me? My father wants to talk to you. That's so? I remember being chased away. I know, you're right, but it's different now. Will you? They're waiting for us at the old mill. Please?
Scott. If you do what my pa says, he won't object anymore to us seeing each other. What's he want? I don't know. But you must do it for me. Later. I'll be here. Hands up, all of you. Murph, close the door. We came here to talk. Nobody's going to do anything to you. I ain't scared of anybody. Marshal, get rid of your pistol. <laughs> A little nervous, eh? The judge is much smarter and believes in living. You have learned a few tricks, boy. Tell me what you have to tell me. Listen, Scott. We want you to come over <clears throat> on our side so we can bring some order back to Clifton, which is just as much your town as ours. I've known your order for more than 20 years, but you're wasting your time. You're right, Scott. But you know me well. And you should think about the fact that I'm on this side. Our worst problem at the moment is Talby. Eliminate him, and then we can think about the rest. No, Murph. As far as now, Talby's done only justice. He may have killed, but only because they made trouble. He'll kill anyone who comes between himself and his goal, good or bad alike. But I'll chase him out of Clifton like I chased him out of Abilene 20 years ago. Scott? I don't want to see the two of us face to face. Then just forget Talby. Step aside. Scott! I told you he wouldn't accept. Much worse for him. The bastard is about to die. And then, it's your turn. Why, you son of a... Eileen! I'm here, Scott. I made it! I killed Scott, Mary! I got him! Scott! There, the two of them! Ah, the plan worked out. Come on, let's go. Murderers! I hope he's dead. The bastard. You're going to hell, Turner. Find out down there. No! Well, this time it's nothing to do with self-defense, Toby. It's murder. Hand me your gun. We'll see what the jury has to say, Nigel. Toby. Obviously, it wasn't just luck. This country is developing. And Clifton along with it. So now, maybe more than ever before, you need a judge as your friend. What's done inside the law is sometimes safer than what's done outside the law. You're still the smartest, Talby. That deal with Wild Jack. 
You know it's going to cost you $50,000 now. A reasonable price. But our alliance will yield at least twice that every month. Seeing as how someone's running away with your carriage, may I have the privilege of escorting you home? Thanks a lot, Mr. Talby. There's no better escort in the whole county. How is he? Bad wound. The bullet did a nasty job. Perhaps he won't be able to use his arm again. He'll never be able to shoot again? I'm hoping he won't, but that wound of his shouldn't prevent him from returning to his broom. Clifton, I think, will finally go back to what it was before. Scott was the only one who could ever stand up to Talby. Now Clifton will never go back to what it was before. Mm. I'll see you tomorrow. Here are the cards. 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 And I'm to believe that this Scott Mary passed from broomstick to pistol, huh? Just like that. Absolutely. When Scott Mary used his pistol, boy, what a spectacle. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Mary the Wonder Boy. Last three weeks, he's been enjoying it over at Vivian Skills' house. Dr. Cullman says that in order to extract the bullet from his right arm, he had to cut a muscle. Uh, in fact, we'll be holding the glass to his mouth, this great gun, so he can drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of bull. When you drop dead or become too feeble to shoot, you get a name as the greatest shot in the West. Yeah, just like Doc Holliday, for instance. When he died, that gun of his became a legend. You know, if Scott Mary should stay paralyzed, there's lots of folks going to think he was able to light a match at ten paces distance. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Champagne! We've got to celebrate. You're looking good. How's your arm? I can take care of myself. <laughs> You're faster than before. Because I exercised. I pushed myself out of bed to do it. to your recovery. The Marshal Star, who did it go to? There is a new Marshal, ain't there? Yeah. Murph Allen Short. He might make a good sheriff. A tough one. In Clifton, I owe nothing to nobody. But to Murph, I'm very indebted. <laughs> of course, I'm indebted to you, too. I wouldn't want to be between two fires. I guess not. Unfortunately, Scotty, you're going to hesitate before shooting at me. If you do anything against Murph, it's also against me. Go home and put your artillery away.
Ah. Yes, Sheriff. What do you want? As from today, it's forbidden to sell firearms in the city. Forbidden? Yes. But I've mailed an order for 35 pistols, and I... Send the pistols back. Oh. Tell me! Tell me! I hear you. As from today, it's forbidden to wear firearms in the city. Unbuckle your belt and let it drop. You better come and get it. I'm coming. I may not be as fast as I used to be, but you could lose again on account of me. The only thing I can leave you is this pistol. It's an old one, but it belonged to Dark Holiday. It's also been mine, and now it's yours. It's endowed with the tricks of three generations of gunmen. The firing pin has been modified so that all you have to do is think about shooting. The trigger fires immediately. This pistol is now in your hands, Scott. But if you still think the way Talby does, I beg you, throw it away. I'm here. They're coming over here. You're surrounded by the gunmen of Talby, Scott. They might kill you, Scott. Don't be worried. Come on out, Scott Mary. Talby wants to speak to you. Coming out immediately, or must we beg you? I'm coming out, but you better not shoot. Another man. That's the first lesson I learned from Talby. Don't move. Drop your gun, Scott. <laughs> yeah, friend, you mustn't trust anyone. That's the second lesson.
Not even at Vivian Skills. Never get between a gun and its target. The right bullet at the right time. A challenge isn't refused, no matter what it might mean to you. Remember saying that to me? You sure you want it this way, Scotty? You saw what happened to Murph. But you won't do it to me. Tell me, did you go to church to pray? If I waited for you in the saloon, the sun wouldn't be in your eyes. I don't believe your tricks will be enough. My gun will do it. That's where you're mistaken. If I was alone, maybe you could have done it. But not against me and Murph. Now I got a pistol that's equal to yours. Sight missing, calibrated perfectly. Your last lesson, Scotty. When you start killing, you can't stop it. Anytime you're ready. Find me a horse, Scotty. I'll get out of your way. No, I'd be stupid to help you. I've learned your lessons like a good boy. When a man has been wounded, you've got to end it. Or it might be that later he'll try to kill you. <laughs> 